Except for our keynote speakers, I ask the panelists and other speakers to please limit your talks to less than 10 minutes. So please forgive me if I remind you uh, now and then uh, of, of the time. Uh, and the last note, I hope I can pronounce names elegantly, if not, so excuse my ignorance. Uh, the, the flow of the session will be guided by the agenda we have shared with you. So that is uh, a list of notes that I can make now. And uh, I'm not sure if it is the connectivity problem that uh, others are not yet with us. Uh, Mr. Shafai, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Farhad will, will join us as in a, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> will uh, Mr. Farhad uh, join us? I didn't get you, Mr. Shafai. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hello, Mr. Alemi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. So, yes, Farhat is available, so he'll join us soon. Okay. 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 And uh, greetings uh, to Mr. Uh, Yosefi. How have you been? Hello, everybody. How are you, Mr. Sir, me. Nice Fine. to see you again. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. I hope you are doing well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Shaw is with us. Um, greetings from Melbourne to you. Actually, I'm in Kabul. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> we may we may catch up when you're back. Yes, I have a long time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So, nah. uh -huh. already 10 minutes into the session and we have not started. So I ask you to please be a bit patient. Yes, Mr. Farhat, welcome. Unmute yourself, please. Sure, I will do that. Uh, I was uh, struggling to join because uh, I was facing with some technical problem. Sorry for being late. Yeah, I did some backbiting uh, regarding your IT there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So, uh, I'm not sure, let me see. We are waiting for Nahid Sarabi. Uh, uh, Dr. Shaw, is uh, uh, Nahid Sarabi coming? She says she's online. Uh, she's online, but uh, how we cannot see her. Uh, are you online, Miss Sarabi? Uh, no, I don't think so. And uh, we are uh, expecting Excellency Nasir Siddiqui. Then, uh, uh, yes, uh, Ms. Sarabi, now online. Yes, uh, Dr. Almi. Sorry, Mom, you're online. I was online, but I was on a restricted mode. Uh, I was struggling to um, ah. get access. Now I'm fine. Okay. And... Uh, um, uh, will you be able to share your video if you want? Ah, yeah, yeah, here you are. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, uh, Dr. Matwani is now with us. Uh, Hello, good morning to everyone. I don't know if you can hear me and my Zoom just updated itself. So 
Uh, I mm -hmm. can see a lot of nodding heads. That means yes, that's great. Yeah, yeah. We can clearly see you and hear you. Fantastic. Okay. So um, now uh, we we are waiting for Nasser Siddiqui. Um, uh, Mr. Farhat, uh, do you know anything about whether Excellency Nasser Siddiqui will be with us? Or uh, maybe he is here. Uh, uh, let me check. Abdullah, I would, if not, recommend that we just change the order of panelists so that we can start and sure. hope for um, the minister to to trickle in as we as we enter the session. Sure, sure, that's a very good idea. Uh, okay, so now we are going to officially start, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the official launch ceremony of SDSN Afghanistan. My name is Abdullah Alimi and I will be facilitating this exciting event. Our event has two parts, as you see on the agenda. Part one is an e-dialogue on Afghanistan sustainable development goals. In the second part of this event, we officially launch SDSN Afghanistan. Before we get started, I would like to make some housekeeping notes. If you have questions, please type them in and we will answer some of them and address others in a separate document later if necessary. Participants will not be able to unmute themselves and we cannot respond if you raise your hands, unfortunately. So again, please type in your inputs. The main medium of communication is, is English, but communication in our national languages can happen. This event is live streamed and we will record the session. Uh, most importantly, we have a very tightly packed agenda, so time management will be a, a real challenge. Except for our keynote speakers, I ask the panelists and other speakers to please limit your talks to less than 10 minutes. So please forgive me. my ignorance. And the last note, the flow of the session will be guided. Uh, the, uh, it says your internet connection is unstable anyway. The flow of the session will be guided by the agenda we have shared with you. So without any further ado, we start with an introduction of SDSN Afghanistan by Mr. Wali Farhat, SDSN Afghanistan Networking Manager, Network Manager. Mr. Mohammad Wali Farhad is currently working as the Strategic Communication and Development Advisor to the Chancellor of Qatib University and leading the Strategic Communications and International Relations related activities at Qatib. He also works in the position of Network Manager for Afghanistan Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Previously, he worked as the business development consultant with various business and firms, including Advanced Accounting LLC, um, Mr. Farhad established Google Consultancy in partnership with other experts. Mr. Farhad holds a bachelor degree in business economics and completed certificate courses in business innovation, strategic communication, knowledge management, data science, and statistics. He has completed uh, some SDG courses as well. So Mr. Farhad, the floor is yours. Thank you, Abdullah. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I am Wali Farhad, the Network Manager of SDS in Afghanistan. I'm pleased to wel welcome you at the official launch event of SDS in Afghanistan. Thank you for joining us today. We are extremely excited that we are going to officially launch the SDS in chapter in Afghanistan today. Before everything, let me express my thanks to my colleagues at Qatib University, UNSDSN, and SDSN Afghanistan, who worked hard to make today's event. Uh, 
our today's event consists of two parts, uh, either look on SDGs and official launch. In the Ida look, we have uh, Mr. Siddiqui, if he joined, if not, he will join later. Uh, from Ministry of Finance, Ms. Sarabi and Mr. Shaw from ENDP, Dr. Nishang from uh, ARU, Mr. Zia Shafai from Kofib University, and Mr. Nasad from Cardon University as a panel speaker. In the panel discussion, the speaker will talk on the role of public sector, international, nonprofit organization, think tanks, universities in achieving SDGs in Afghanistan. Also, in the official lunch event, we will have His Excellency Abbas Basir, Minister of Higher Education, as a chief guest speaker, and Professor Jeffrey Sachs, President of United States, and as a keynote speaker. Opening speech will be delivered by Mr. Ali Ahmad Yusuf, Chancellor of Khartoum University and Chair of Estates in Afghanistan. The guest speaker are respected Mr. Nabi Saroj, Deputy Minister for Policy, Minister for Policy at Ministry of Economy, Professor Muhammad Shafi Sharafi, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at Kabul University, and Ms. Maria Cortes Puch, Vice President of Networks at UNSTC. Uh, before starting our dialogue, let me introduce the SDS in Afghanistan briefly. SDS in Afghanistan was approved in March 2020 as a platform for academia, business, government, and civil society organizations to promote evidence-based solutions and to help achieve the SDGs in the country. The need to act on the long-term objectives, awareness and engagement, teach Afghanistan and solutions for sustainable development. In this regard, SDS in Afghanistan will mobilize resources and engage solutions provider by engaging Afghan in dialogue on peace, helping on supporting and supporting collaboration for sustainable policies and programs, facilitating research and fostering evidence-based solutions mechanism to influence decision, make, decision making educating the current future SDGs implementers, advocating for and pro providing technical supports to policy change, helping to attract and align resources toward achieve achievement of ASDGs and helping to develop proper reporting mechanism. Currently, SDGs in Afghanistan work on three programs, which is awareness and engagement, teach Afghanistan and providing solutions for SDGs that I have mentioned before. The purpose of awareness and engagement are raising awareness among, among organizations and institutions through publication of policy journal on SDGs progress, organizing sectoral and cross-sectoral dialogue on to enhance multi-stakeholder partnerships to achieve the SDGs in Afghanistan. Also, we are raising awareness among the community through a national-wide media and community-based campaign to on ASDGs for general public. Also, the purpose of Teach Afghanistan are to analyze and improve access to quality education and provide education on ASDGs. And, add, and final uh, pro program of SDGs in Afghanistan is providing solutions for ASDGs. We aim to manage uh, data for Afghanistan sustainable development goals by uh, establishing a data center at uh, Khatib University and other universities. Provide technological and tool support for Afghanistan's sustainable development goals. And also we aim to help the di uh, different SDGs stakeholders in the area of monitoring and reporting. And finally, we are going to influence the decision-making through policy research and policy publications. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, during the past nine months, we have worked in four areas. The first area is building strategic partnerships. The second is working on our communication channels. And also, we have organized many uh, uh, seminars and conferences. And uh, the fourth area that we have worked is uh, membership engagement. During the past nine months, we built a strategic partnership with leading development organization in Afghanistan. We have organized the first meeting of leadership council by participation of representatives from UNDP, Khatib University, Afghanistan Research and Innovation Unit, Kabul University, Cardon University, ANEC, Ministry of Economy, Akbar, Bahar Group of Companies, and ICC Afghanistan. 
we also participated in the 24 hour webinar uh, and hosted a panel discussion on peace process of Afghanistan. Furthermore, we launched our website and social media channels and we are available online right now. You can go through our YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter and uh, website. You can find all informations regarding the SDS in Afghanistan programs and other related uh, documents that you need to know about SDS in Afghanistan. Uh, we have received in the area of uh, members engagement, we have received uh, 35 plus membership application and the SDSN Strategic Council recently approved ninth of them. The rest of application will be approved during the month of December. Uh, let me use uh, this opportunity uh, to invite universities, CSOs, think tanks, and research organizations to apply for the membership of SDSN Afghanistan. Thank you everyone. At the end, I wish you all the best and hope that you learn more about SDGs and SDS in Afghanistan from the other programs that we have today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Farhat, for your information. Now I would like to introduce our next speakers, Ms. Nahid Sarabi, Policy Advisor, and Dr. Keith Shaw, SDG Integration Advisor with UNDP Afghanistan. Uh, Ms. Nohit Sarabi is currently working as policy advisor at UNDP Afghanistan. Ms. Sarabi was the former deputy finance minister for policy uh, from 2017 to May 2020. With more than seven years of development related experience, Ms. Uh, Sarabi worked with a team of experts to help develop the Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework, ANPDF. She has also served as the director of Afghanistan National Development and Strategy. Ms. Sarabi earned a bachelor in political science from Delhi University and uh, a master's degree in development management from Ruhr uh, University in Germany and a, a master's degree in applied economics from Western Michigan University in the US. Dr. Keith Shaw has a first degree in botany and two master's degrees one in plant classification and one on organizational change. He also has a PhD in how plant populations respond to changes in their environment. He has 25 years of professional experience with short and long-term development projects in 21 countries, including in Africa, Asia, Central and South America and the Balkans. During this time, he has worked mostly on general biodiversity issues and as an advisor to senior management in various organizations. He has been in Afghanistan since 2007, working for the UN, consulting companies and NGOs. For the last two years, he has been working for UNDP as an advisor on SDG integration issues and uh, systems thinking approaches. Now, Ms. Sarabi and Dr. Sh uh, Sean, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Alimi. Um, a very good morning, good evening to all of you, and big congratulations on all the partners for launching this initiatives in very timely. Um, we'll try to be short because we have to um, divide the timing between two of us. Uh, we cannot underscore the development that has happened in Afghanistan for the past um, 20 years, but there are also many challenges. You might be aware that UNDP launched the Afghanistan Human Development Report yesterday, and unfortunately, the report positions Afghanistan 169 uh, um, out of 189 territories and countries. And that's um, 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 unfortunately still a, a positions Afghanistan in the lower ranks of human development. Uh, poverty is an, at an alarming rate and services can be highly at risk due to pandemic. What we can all agree is we all as development practitioners need, re, have to retain modalities, <coughs> sorry for my voice, uh, new modalities of engagement and development um, um, in Afghanistan and around the globe. Now, what is the role of UNDP here? Um, UNDP is a nodal agency uh, for sustainable development goals, provides a support platform for to advise, to guide government of Afghanistan and governments and all relevant 
um, development practitioners as how to achieve sustainable development agenda 2030 um, through different policy options. I would like to touch um, shortly upon three dimensions of our support to government, and then I'll hand over to Dr. Shaw. One of the areas that UNDP um, is initiating to work together with the government is data and analytics. Through this approach, we are supporting government of Afghanistan um, and different institutions as how to gather uh, SDG related data and provide innovative analytics. For example, we are together with the Ministry of Economy and Finance um, going to develop a, the dashboard, which is a multi sectoral, multi dimensional platform that shows how um, initiatives, how um, development objectives, um, that relate to Afghanistan national peace and development framework, its relevant national priority programs, and also Afghanistan sustainable development goals are achieved and how to gather this data and provide analytics. The second tier of our support is policy um, integration. Through this mechanism, and um, I hope we can get uh, uh, Deputy Minister Siddiqui online in, in a few minutes, um, we are supporting government as to Create Afghanistan Sustainable Development Goals into NPDF, National Priority Programs and Development Policy and Planning Process. It means that right from developing of the policies to how these policies are funded or costed, budget process, all these have integrated SDGs and attainment of this 2030 agenda into them. One approach through this initiative that we have practically um, will be launching in, in, in a few days from now um, and have worked closely with Ministry of Finance and Economy is working or developing macroeconomic framework models. Now, why this macroeconomic framework models are important is because it enables government to see uh, policy choices and trade-offs as how better to initiate a policy to achieve sustainable development goals related to its development priorities and objectives. The third tier of our support is SDG financing. We all know and, and, and from the Geneva conference that aid and ODA will not be a sustainable medium or sustainable sourcing instrument of financing development objectives. And we are supporting government to better initiate financing frameworks and indulge in innovative financing to fund medium to long-term development objectives of the country. One of the areas um, that we are supporting government is risk guarantees, um, um, mechanisms like uh, how to use sukuk, um, that's Islamic bonding, crowdfunding, and other mechanisms that will be alternative to aid um, in Afghanistan. I'll Stop here and hand over to Dr. Shaw. Thank you, Nahid. I'll make it very short because we don't have much time. But um, as you heard, um, UNDP is providing a support function, if you like, on SDG integration. So I've just got to tell you what I think SDG integration means and why we need it. And for me, it's a learning process. It's sort of a way of thinking about the SDGs that helps us design interventions that have a much greater overall development impact. But what's the point of development? It is to bring human development into balance with planetary boundaries. And the thing about the SDGs is that you cannot achieve one SDG on its own. They can only be achieved together as a framework when considering how they work together, how they interact and influence each other. But there are a number of very important um, benefits of thinking about how to get them working together like this. The first is it will help the government to identify the best route towards its goal of greater self-reliance. The second is that in order to respond to citizens' needs, we need to think about how to work with SDGs uh, in the most cost-effective and efficient manner possible to, to deliver those needs. And then thirdly, um, we have a real challenge uh, with the sustainable development goals in a country like Afghanistan in how to balance uh, the country's short-term country's short needs with long-term sustainability goals. So this is where SDG integration can really help you uh, make clearer decisions about where that balance lies. And most importantly for Afghanistan after the Geneva Pledging Conference, 
they will also help you with the modeling that Nahid spoke of to understand how to make the best possible use of the funding that is available. So ultimately, we're trying to achieve the optimum balance between improved economic prosperity, social inclusion, and ecological sustainability with the intention of doing this, moving from where we are right now, which is mostly people working on single ASDGs with limited consideration of the interactions between them to groups of people, organizations working on connected ASDGs at the same time, like energy, food, water, climate change, for example, by considering how they interact. Uh, so with that, I think I'll wrap up because I know we don't have much time, but I hope that was a taster. If you would like to uh, find out any more about SDG integration, you can contact either of us at UNDP. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sarabi and Dr. Shaw for your valuable insights. Definitely um, uh, in this uh, session, we are only talking about some of the headings. Of course, we will be following up with you and we will discuss the details of uh, the initiatives that you have undertaken and how you can work with uh, Afghanistan SDSN. Uh, now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Zia Shafai. Mm, uh, Mr. Zia Shafai has a master's degree in economics and currently works as vice chancellor for finance and admin at Kotib University. Prior to his current position, Mr. Shafai works, worked as managing director at Kotib Research Institute. He has 13 years of diverse working experience, mostly in development finance with financial companies like uh, Exchanger Zone, Afghanistan Institute of Banking um, and Finance, uh, the first microfinance bank and BRAC Afghanistan as COO, senior trainer, produ uh, product development officer, program supervisor and MIS manager. Mr. Shafai is a certified international Microsoft expert and has pursued several quality online courses uh, facilitated by the world famous institutions like MIT, Georgetown University and International uh, Monetary Fund. Uh, Mr. Shafai will be uh, uh, discussing cross-sectoral partnership and role of SDS in Afghanistan as a network of solution providers. Over to you, Mr. Shafai. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Alemi. Hello, everyone. Uh, so it is great uh, to be here, and I, I want to welcome all of you uh, to the launch of this great initiative, which is STS in Afghanistan. So uh, you heard from uh, other uh, speakers or panelists, for example, Ms. Sarabi and Mr. Shaw, and what they were talking about the challenge in Afghanistan and how the organization faced challenges. So myself, when I have for the four, last four years, when I, I, I'm busy and involved with the SDGs in Afghanistan, uh, really I saw that uh, organizations like UNDP or government organization, academia, think tank organizations, all uh, beneficiary of SDGs. They, are, they were or they are interested in attaining the SDGs in Afghanistan. But uh, we but we saw, all of us, we know that their activities, unfortunately, were not very in a, a managed in a very coordinated or in a very co coherent way. So that to come together to, to provide solution and discuss uh, the challenges, that, that was a, a problem. Well, for, let me give you an example from, for example, National Environment Protection Agency of Afghanistan, which uh, three months ago announced that uh, Afghanistan in Kabul, people are not allowed to use coal as, uh, for heating, uh, as, as for heating their house in the winter. While you see that, yes, it was a policy, but you see that on the other hand, the poverty, Mr. Rabi talked about the ratio of the poverty in Afghanistan. So you look at the policy making even at the top level, there is no coherent, there is no coordination. That is the issue. That one organization say, okay, well, I will not allow the cool to be burned, but uh, cannot considering on the other hand, the poverty rate and capital per capita income of, of the people. So it indicates lack of coordination among organizations like this academia, you see every university has their own approaches. 
So now, uh, I'm pleased to say that East Asian Afghanistan is now a platform where you see the diverse people from uh, many different organizations or different sectors came here today to discuss. So you have a representative from academia, we have from UNDP, we have from government, and we have from the uh, from uh, private sector representative. It indicates a think tank organization like ARU, research organization. So what it say? It says that the for, so now you see the way which you are working in silos in the past, everybody was working in, in their own way. So now we can come together to work uh, through the platform of SDS in Afghanistan to, to better work on the SDGs and, and add value for the country. So SDS in Afghanistan really address this how. Uh, I want to talk uh, the partnerships, cross-sectoral partnership, uh, starting from the leadership council of SDS in Afghanistan. So we have uh, uh, experts from academia, from UNDP, from, uh, from different ministries, from think tank organizations, from research organizations. We have experts as a leadership council member of SDS in Afghanistan. So they, uh, they regularly join and discuss on different uh, issues of SDG related issues. And the more important is that we expect them uh, using their expertise, they help our partners or our members uh, to provide technical supports. It is it, it research, it is be capacity building or the, the way macroeconomic modeling, which you do NDP set, and uh, the strategic leadership for the future of ASTS and how part partners go and how to move together in the future. And uh, we have people from a representative from Parliament of Afghanistan to provide political and advocacy support to the SDS in Afghanistan and, the, and its partners, to lobby with the government politically, to discuss how SDG is important, how to allocate budget, how to work on that, and uh, also mobilize the finance for, the, uh, for, for, the, uh, for financing the SDG. So this is uh, uh, the, the thing which we say stays in Afghanistan on it is a leadership council uh, created a partnership, a cross sectoral partnership where experts provide uh, the service which I discussed. So actually if we see the partners of the SDS in Afghanistan, also like you see here online, we have representative, we have private sector, for example, Chamber of Commerce with us, uh, so, uh, Bahar Sarab group of companies is with us providing finance for uh, money and financial support to the SDS in Afghanistan from the government organizations. Uh, we, we are partner with Ministry of Economy, with Ministry of Higher Education and Ministry of Finance. And also from international organization, not just uh, the domestic organization, international organizations are with us, like the NDP, which is shown commitment, we had discussion in a deep discussion how we can work together to support uh, academia and research organizations. So UNDP is uh, ready to support, for example, uh, the SDS in Afghanistan. Uh, SDS in Global is with, with us. We have uh, today we'll hear, you will hear from them. And uh, SDS in Australia supported us in many areas. SDS in Greece, which is a very successful network in Europe is now in touch with us to share their experience with us. So more important, we, are, we have partnership with the international universities. For example, currently, we are in partner with San Francisco College, which is based in New York. So uh, that uh, organization or that university is very success in integrating SDGs into their curriculum, into research and operations. So they globally share their experience with the universities and uh, with the SDS in Afghanistan, how academia can do that. So we are in partner with our ARMIT and Monash University in, uh, in Australia, so that to, to hear from them how to do that. So now, uh, this, what, what I discussed, it is uh, uh, as a platform, SDS in Afghanistan brought together uh, people from multi-sectors to put together synergies on how to help SDGs uh, to be attained in Afghanistan. So now, having all this network and partnership, 
the, value, the added value for our members, we have members also from uh, many sectors, from academia to health. So now we can help that uh, to work on joint program research, and then it can, for universities, uh, all states in Afghanistan and partners uh, can work to who can work on joint research and joint programs. Uh, and then more important with the research and think tank organizations, the data which already highlighted by Ms. Sarabi, we will work on that because the issue of data in Afghanistan is a serious issue for researchers. You see, if we, a researcher want to find, do a research, you know, cannot find data, that is the issue. So really we are concerned about the, the agenda of 2030, that decade of action is finished. Again, the researcher came and not find anything in Afghanistan. So that, is, uh, that will be a great regret. So that's why partners, we will work together with our, to enable our members to create such a center for data analysis. And the NGO, we have Akbar, which is the network of all NGOs in Afghanistan. And then we, uh, we work with NGOs uh, to take part in advocacy for, for example, monitoring, localization, uh, and nationalization of the SDGs. So I, I don't have more time to talk. So just I highlighted the role of multi sectors, how they come together in states in Afghanistan, created this platform to jointly work for a, for a better uh, Afghanistan and through implementation of the SDG. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shafai, for your insightful uh, uh, remarks. I welcome uh, Excellency Nasser Siddiqui Saib uh, to the panel. Um, uh, now I uh, uh, introduce the next panelist, uh, uh, Dr. Matwani. Uh, Dr. Nishang Matwani is Deputy Director at the Afghanistan Research and Evaluation Unit in Kabul. Dr. Matwani holds a doctorate in international and political studies from the University of New South Wales at the uh, Australian Defence Force Academy, examining uh, transnational conflicts, regional competitions, and the ideologies of violent extremist groups. He has observed Afghanistan's 2014 and 2019 presidential elections, as well as the 2018 parliamentary elections. Dr. Matwani, is a visiting fellow at the Asia Pacific College of Diplomacy at the Australian National University and previously worked at the London based think tank International Institute for Strategic Studies to examine armed conflicts in South Asia. He has published in peer reviewed journals, online channels, and his co edited book, Afghanistan Challenges and Prospects, was published by Routledge in. 2018. Uh, Dr. Matwani, please. Thank you so much for giving me the platform. I have to say it's always strange hearing about yourself. So I do uh, uh, but thank you for reading out that biography. It sounds like it belongs to somebody else. Uh, and I will now get into uh, the discussion, which is, uh, which is for me, uh, which looks at how do uh, civil society organizations and research think tanks uh, how can they take part in advancing SDGs monitoring and reporting? I wanted to take a bit of a step back because I think monitoring and reporting comes a bit further down the line. So it's really about uh, looking at the building blocks. Uh, I work at the Afghanistan Research and Evaluation Unit, one of the country's leading think tanks, and I hope to be able to offer some insights from the work that we have been doing. Uh, before I go into that, I think it's really important to acknowledge that the preservation and advancing SDGs in Afghanistan is a challenging enterprise due to the uh, deteriorating political security and economic environment. We all know about it, so I'm not going to delve deeper into it. Uh, when looking at the SDGs, I think a key point is that the very essence of SDGs is inclusivity and pluralism. Uh, however, given the current uh, deteriorating environment, there are some SDGs that are at greater risk than others due to political security and ideological reasons. We can think of uh, gender equality, education, as well as the protection of marginalized uh, groups. And what's exacerbating these, uh, these particular problems is, of course, a weak economy, widespread poverty, and also the constant displacement of people, which really goes against the grain of SDGs. And it creates the impression of as though uh, the country is fa facing waves after waves of challenges that seem to not end at all. 
There's also the, uh, the challenging prospect of uh, limited collaboration, there's limited data, and also a lack of evidence-based research that add to these challenges. But there is hope. It won't be easy, but one of the solutions in preserving the gains in advancing SDGs is in evidence-based research and shifting it closer to policy circles to inform policy and practice. So how can this be done? The uh, one way to look at it is that the application of evidence-based research is not going to be a clear a line between cause and effect is more so of a correlation. And these are capacities that have to be built over time, but it is evidence-based research that is essential in addressing complex multidimensional challenges. Think about it this way. Uh, we're currently sitting in the midst of a once in a century uh, global pandemic, and it has compelled many governments to base their strategies on science as opposed to assumptions or populism. But at the same time, the challenges that we're facing now are misinformation and purposeful disinformation, which has made it really hard for policy measures to gain traction. So what can be done to better position research in the service of preserving and building SDGs? That's a question I often ask myself um, and my colleagues also at ARU. And like I said, before we get into monitoring and, and reporting part of it, which I found in my experience uh, is often quite ad hoc and project-based I think what Afghanistan needs is a robust foundation and a professional culture of evidence-based research. So that is where the role of CSOs uh, and think tanks come in. They must collaborate, uh, coordinate, and integrate the advancements of SDGs in their respective areas of competitive advantage. I understand that's, not, that's no easy task because uh, we've been working uh, through ARU in this field and there's uh, the, the approaches that uh, individual organizations, including my own take, is that it lacks that coordination and collaboration. So what we're hoping is that through the SDSN network that is being established and launched today, we would be, uh, we'd be able to do it in a far more coherent manner. Secondly, uh, CSOs and think tanks ought to also invest in capacity development because that will enable them to champion and own a particular challenge or challenges that can really help elevate Afghan voices. And the reason that's important is that we need to be able to find local solutions to local problems that also need to be contextually relevant and contextually intelligent. The third point is uh, civil society organizations and think tanks uh, also need to be able to engage widely. Uh, too often we see engagement end at the time of uh, with the with the publication but to me that should be the starting point that should be a starting point for engagement with practitioners universities as well as private sector as a way to test ideas through sustained workshops so as not to fall into the uh, the trap of proposing solutions that, that are disconnected from the context the fourth point is it's to build and institutionalize cooperative partnerships with the government uh, one particular manner is through MOUs, as opposed to just project-based, which are ad hoc, but also to harness what private industry and local communities have to offer. You've got to remember that a lot of what happens, the really interesting things happen uh, in uh, Kabul, but we also need to be able to reach out to provinces at the sub-national level because we can't afford to lose our people in uh, provinces. The fifth point is, it's to strengthen links with higher education institutions in the country and in the region. So when I say the region, I'm talking about look at regional countries and not just to the West. Of course, it's important to have these linkages with uh, universities and uh, uh, leading universities around the world, but there's so much to be gained by uh, collaborating and having these relationships with universities, uh, both within the country, but also in our immediate region, because they will be able to speak to and understand the context better than, uh, better than uh, others. Uh, and the last point is to publish research. Uh, it's really critical, of course, to publish research and to publish this in Dari and Pashto uh, as well, because it, the reports need to be accessible. And this goes back to my initial point about SDGs being plural and inclusive, and so should the research findings so that readers across the country uh, are able to access them engage with them, run advocacy campaigns, and also to be able to present to a policy audience. I know in Afghanistan, there are a range of different challenges and a lot of them seem insurmountable, but at the same time, opportunities exist in preserving and advancing the gains of the past two, uh, two decades. 
the three things that I find hope in uh, are firstly that Afghanistan is gradually set is is gradually actually getting there, and that's due in part to the active civil society that exists in the country. Uh, there's also an uh, increasing number of private and public universities. And as a result, more educated youth that are helping to lay that building blocks for a culture of research and inquiry. Uh, when I go around in Kabul, the second point is that when I go around in Kabul, I see increasingly people uh, ask the question, why, how, and so what? And that is reflective of a shift taking place. And lastly, uh, and this is a message to uh, donors, which is that I think donors can play a really strat uh, strategic role in approaching uh, CSOs and think tanks as partners and enablers, because that will also, it's also intrinsic for them to find solutions to complex donors. But at the same time, donors will also be committed to longer term partnerships, not just ad hoc project based engagement, because that's essential. Uh, having longer term uh, engagements is essential to helping research institutions create that space, create that maneuverability that's really required so that they can approach problems holistically, strategically, and also in a sustained manner. Thank you very much. I will end there. Uh, thank you, Dr. Matwani, for your insightful words. Definitely uh, research think tanks and partnerships play a very important role in achieving um, uh, SDGs in Afghanistan. Now I'm uh, introducing our next speaker, Excellency, uh, Nasir Siddiqui, Deputy Minister of Finance for Policy. Uh, Excellency, Mr. Nasser Siddiqui is the Acting Deputy Minister of Finance and Director General of Coordination, Monitoring and Reporting of the Ministry. He has previously worked as a Senior Technical uh, Anti-Corruption Advisor for Office of the Chief Executive and as Deputy Program Director at GIZ's Open Policy Advisory Fund Program. Mr. Siddiqui has also been a lecturer at Dunya University of Afghanistan. Mr. Siddiqui's professional work uh, focuses on public policy and economic development since 2011. He has worked for and with many national and international non-governmental organizations, UN agencies, and the government. Mr. Siddiqui has also written numerous articles in Farsi and English, which are published in the Globe Post, Fair Observer, Hashti uh, Soup Daily, and Salam Watandar. Siddiqui Saib, the floor is yours. Well, let me say uh, thank you so much and uh, greetings and apologies uh, actually to our respected uh, panel members uh, for not being able to uh, join this very interesting discussion um, on time. I was caught up with another meeting uh, with Minister and uh, since I was looking forward to this uh, webinar, I try to make sure that I attend at least, if not able to uh, contribute and speak, but at least listen to the valuable ideas uh, that are being discussed and shared. So thank you once again, Olimisev, and the SDSN team, the UNDP, for organizing this webinar, and thank you for having me also with you. Um, I think the agenda that is uh, expected of the Ministry of Finance to speak about is uh, the policy instruments, alignment, financing, and uh, uh, monitoring of uh, policies. Uh, let me sir, uh, first start by saying that sustainable development goals in Afghanistan is not a new topic, and I'm sure my colleagues in the panel have extensively touched upon that uh, issue. Since its adoption in 2015, uh, the government of Afghanistan established different mechanisms and uh, policy instruments to make sure that the uh, sustainable development goals are contextualized and uh, are integrated into the policies and strategies of government to make sure that the uh, outcomes and the results of those uh, goals are achieved. Primarily Ministry of Economy was targeted to dedicate an entire department to sustainable development goals. And they were tasked by uh, making sure that the newly introduced sustainable development goals are integrated into the existing policy instruments of the government of Afghanistan, and that they are breaking down further into um, actionable targets and goals on, uh, to be then monitored on annual basis. 
This happened uh, in a time when the government of Afghanistan has already uh, had already developed its uh, five-year development strategy in the form of first document of Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework. And what happens uh, uh, after the development of Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework back in 2016 and 17 is that uh, follow-up uh, implementation and national priority programs are developed uh, for uh, Afghanistan. At that time, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Economy together worked to make sure that the, there is an alignment of the SDGs, ASDGs as we call them, Afghanistan Sustainable Development Goals with the 10 national priority programs. The Geneva Conference in 2018 and preparations for the Geneva Conference 2020 uh, uh, provided us really with a unique opportunity to actually make sure that the sustainable development goals are integrated and aligned with government priorities and policies at the very highest level. And that is when we started working together with our international partners and 64 government agencies to uh, uh, develop the second version of Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework, which we now call ANPDF2. This framework provides uh, uh, the views and the ambitions and the plans of the government of Afghanistan to achieve self-reliance, to reduce and to finally uh, eliminate poverty, to enable in environmental preservation, to also facilitate uh, the, the role uh, of private sector and to make sure that the natural resources are used in a sustainable manner for the uh, economic development of Afghanistan. We did this and thanks to our international colleagues uh, by making sure that the objectives and the uh, visions that the government of Afghanistan create for its development and economic self-sufficiency uh, and social, social and political development, uh, uh, the, these visions and objectives are fully aligned with the sustainable development goals. So luckily we were able to uh, integrate most of the sustainable development goals within the national Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework. And by highlighting specific sustainable development goals corresponding to each sector, to each objective, to each priority, we have further emphasized on the importance of the role of sustainable development goals. Following the development of the Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework II, the government of Afghanistan is further, <coughs> excuse me, planning to consider further integration and breakdown of Afghanistan sustainable development goals in the development and revision of our national priority programs. In the ANPDF2, the government has proposed revision of the existing 10 national priority programs and development of five new national priority programs that directly corresponds to our needs and priorities over the next four years. And in the development and revision of national priority programs, we are going to work collaboratively and very closely with our international partners, especially our colleagues in the United Nations Development Program and relevant government ministries to make sure that the SDGs and ASDGs for that matter are fully integrated and aligned with government's priorities, interests, and needs. When it comes to policy monitoring, policy implementation, and achievement of the results that we set for ourselves, we are again discussing with all stakeholders to develop a comprehensive monitoring and reporting system that will provide not only the necessary information for the government of Afghanistan to be able to demonstrate that it has been able to achieve its objectives, but to be also able to provide sufficient assurances to our international partners that the SDGs are also fully integrated and aligned with our policy priorities. And we also have the tools, the mechanisms, and the processes needed to further elaborate and expand on the achievement of sustainable development goals in Afghanistan. Among our priorities and policies um, uh, within the next four years in the government are making sure that different plans and policies and strategies of our international partners are also aligned with each other. 
What I think uh, the main message of the sustainable development goals across the world and contextually in Afghanistan is to really draw on the uh, plethora of information and research, scientific uh, research that is available on the status of the social indicators, political indicators, good governance, economic indicators. And these are aligned with the needs and priorities of the country. And when we speak of the knowledge uh, and expertise generated at the global level, the government of Afghanistan, by focusing and emphasizing on the involvement of communities down to the citizen level, also makes sure, uh, make sure that uh, the policy development, decision making and policy implementation uh, are fully uh, done with the engagement of the citizens of Afghanistan. So inclusivity, as was uh, mentioned by Dr. Mutwani, I think here the government of Afghanistan has really uh, uh, tried to reach out to the, to, the, to the single body of our society, the individuals, the citizens, and by engaging them in policy formulation, implementation, monitoring, we will try to make sure that uh, 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 the sustainable development goals are uh, achieved. Another component of our strategy to uh, not only uh, look uh, on, on, the, on the planning side of our development objectives, but also in the implementation and financing of our development plans, the government of Afghanistan has proposed in the new Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework that we would like to diversify the sources of our uh, uh, development financing. Mainly, as you all know, the government of Afghanistan depends up to 70% and more on foreign uh, aid uh, for its uh, operation and functions, uh, of which uh, 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 I think uh, a large share of uh, uh, the grants that are provided to, uh, to Afghanistan uh, are expended uh, by our international partners directly. There, we also want to involve our international partners to consider integrating sustainable development goals in their own strategies and policies uh, for Afghanistan. So what the government of Afghanistan through Ministry of Finance is trying to establish is, 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 a, is a coherent, consistent and fully aligned uh, platform and, and, and uh, uh, reinforcement mechanisms between different policy instruments and uh, monitoring uh, systems. Uh, by diversifying our uh, relations with our international partners, the government of Afghanistan has proposed that uh, when it comes to financing of development initiatives, we need to look for more sustainable sources of financing. And this directly corresponds to many sustainable development goals, uh, helping Afghanistan to gradually move towards self-reliance, but also uh, uh, making sure that Afghanistan is integrated increasingly in the global uh, financial mechanisms and the different financial instruments that are available, Afghanistan is eligible to apply to them and to benefit from those instruments uh, to reduce its dependence on, on grants and to continuously and gradually uh, mobilize alternative sources of financing for development interventions and initiatives in Afghanistan. Speaking of the monitoring and uh, reporting on uh, achievement of the policy goals and policy outcomes, which also includes uh, sustainable development goals outcomes. Uh, uh, we recognize uh, the limitation of uh, uh, data. One of the problems that the government of Afghanistan has been uh, uh, dealing with for uh, the past uh, few years, I would say even uh, decades, is lack of reliable information establishing the baselines and based on which we then uh, set our targets and measure our progress against uh, those uh, baselines. What we also have uh, uh, considered and discussed with our international partners and government stakeholders is that the capacities within the government institutions uh, uh, about uh, the policy formulation, about the policy implementation and policy monitoring needs to be reinforced and further expanded so that our, uh, we have a holistic and, 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 and a consistent view of what the government of Afghanistan, what our international partners wants to achieve in Afghanistan, what are the different mechanisms and instruments and how we uh, report the progress, which is both reliable and acceptable to our uh, uh, stakeholders. 
in that view, uh, we have uh, uh, made good progress uh, uh, while going to the Geneva Conference by developing these policy instruments. At the first step, we have made sure that uh, uh, the, the, there is close alignment at the policy level. Now we are down at the implementation level and our efforts will be focused on making sure that the implementation is also consistent and coherent. And it really helps Afghanistan's government as well as our international partners to achieve uh, 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 a shared objective, a shared goal, which we all uh, aspire to achieve uh, by the end of the transformation uh, decade. Uh, that's all from my side. If there were any particular questions, I would be more than happy to respond to. Well, let me say thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you, Excellency Mr. Siddiqui, for your wise words. Um, now our next speaker is Mr. Mirwais Nahzad, Cardon University Chief Operating Officer. Uh, Mr. Mirwais Nahzad is uh, the Cardon University Chief Operating Officer responsible for the strategic planning operations and organizational systems development priorities. Mr. Nahzad brings over 15 years of experience in managing and leading international programs in uh, Ghana, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Malawi. Prior to joining Cardon University, Mr. Nahzad worked in various capacities, including the Chief Executive Officer, Deputy Country Director, and Senior Program Officer. He has also consulted for the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, uh, Dominion Institute, Global Affairs Canada, and several other leading organizations. Mr. Nahzad, was a uh, Sove scholar with the Jean Sove Foundation and McGill University. He has obtained a Master of Higher Education Leadership and Administration from Royal Roads University in Canada and is a graduate of the University of Ottawa, specializing in public policy and governance. Uh, Mr. Nazad, the floor is yours. Um, alaikum, Ali Misad, and Thank you very much for that kind uh, introduction. Um, I want to re brief in my remarks and uh, focus on the uh, topic assigned to me to look at how universities can support the government of Afghanistan in policy formulation, implementation, and evaluation. Um, uh, I want to focus the conversation on three specific topics. Um, uh, first, I would like to speak a little bit about the current context vis-a-vis -vis the SDGs in Afghanistan. Second, uh, I think there is a merit, uh, as our uh, colleagues and panelists highlighted, to discuss the effectiveness and relevance of the current structures and mechanisms towards the Afghanistan SDGs. And finally, provide some food for thought and recommendations on how universities can work in partnership with the government of Afghanistan in our international partners such as SDSN, uh, UNDP, and other actors to um, achieve the 2030 um, agenda. Uh, in, in terms of context, uh, first of all, um, uh, I want to recognize the work that the Ministry of Economy as the lead for the formulation of the Afghanistan SDGs has done. Um, the uh, ministry and the national and international partners work on a, first of all, um, um, a systematic commitment to the 2030 agenda, the nationalization of the SDGs, um, as well as uh, the prioritization of the SDGs in its alignment, as our colleagues mentioned, with the ANBPTF um, is, is noteworthy and is significant. It signifies Afghanistan's commitment to be part of this global partnership to address the SDGs. When we look at uh, specifically the effectiveness and relevance of the current structures and mechanisms that are set out to achieve the SDGs, um, I will speak uh, specifically from um, uh, our unique institution's perspective. Cardan University as the first private university in Afghanistan and also uh, an, a contributor uh, uh, for the SDGs. We are ranked in Times Higher Education as the only Afghan institution um, uh, in, in that uh, ranking. Uh, the number one, we believe that uh, while um, uh, the national and international partners have had significant achievements, uh, there are uh, a number of challenges that we need to take into account. 
Number one, um, as we speak, there is a lack of clarity about the effectiveness of the current structures, mechanisms, and strategies. Uh, as the office of CEO is, uh, for example, in Afghanistan, no longer functional. Um, and as you can see from the Ministry of Economy's website, the last update was uh, done in uh, January of, of this year, almost a year. With NPPTF and its alignment with NPP, I think there is a need for further public engagement, awareness raising, and uh, civic engagement when it comes to making the SDGs a truly national phenomenon. The second, when it comes to role of academic institutions, we also have significant challenges. When you look at the composition of the consultation, decision-making review of the SDGs in Afghanistan, you will find that the academic institutions, the country's uh, main enablers of human capital development, their role is extremely limited and symbolic. The current consultation mechanism in particular, the working groups and executive committees um, are highly bureaucratic. Uh, they lack effective representation from academic institutions. Um, we believe that universities are hubs for innovation, they are hubs for youth engagement, advocacy, and ultimately the enablers of the development of uh, the development of sustainability leaders and champions who remain um, uh, underutilized um, and, and resourced across both public and private institutions when we look at SDGs in Afghanistan. As Dr. Amatwani from ARU, our colleague, emphasized, Afghanistan's research output, uh, particularly related to the SDGs, remains extremely limited uh, when you look at it comparably with, with the region. Um, uh, Afghanistan has a unique opportunity. Our academic institutions, our national and international partners have an opportunity to increase Afghanistan's research output, in particular, the contributions of higher education institutions in achieving the SDGs. We believe that Afghanistan could serve as, as a model for the SDG implementation in conflict-affected context and potentially serve as a role model on how uh, different actors, national and international, work under complex situations to advance the SDGs um, uh, agenda. And um, uh, the final point in regards to the current uh, effectiveness of the model, uh, there are missed opportunities around public and private partnerships, um, uh, where uh, universities individually have a number of um, initiatives and programs, but those are not closely linked with our international partners, even with the government agencies. While again, there are efforts and initiatives and awareness raising uh, programs, uh, there is a lack of a systematic and sustainable and impactful engagement where public and private uh, sector agencies could work together to advance the developmental um, agenda. Um, in, in terms of recommendation, the last part of, of my um, uh, discussion, um, I want to recommend uh, five uh, uh, key ideas uh, as food for thought. Number one, um, establishment of a national consortium of both public and private universities to help achieve the uh, national SDG agenda is timely, it's relevant, it's probably one of the most significant steps we could take to make sure we can maximize the potential of universities as we look at the uh, national development commitments. SDSN Afghanistan, um, I believe, is a promising model uh, to build consensus and leverage the extensive resources and potential that exists across Afghanistan's campuses. Number two, uh, there is um, a need for investment and incentivization um, of the development of an SDG-focused research agenda so that we could bolster Afghanistan's research output on the SDGs and ultimately provide best practices and replicate models for other conflict-affected contexts where they could learn from the experiences um, of Afghanistan towards their uh, national development uh, agenda. Number three, universities can provide training, skills development, and consulting services to the government agency with a particular focus on policy development, strategic implementation, 
and governance uh, reform initiatives. Uh, while um, institutions like Kardan University, Khatib University, and the SDSN Afghanistan membership as a whole uh, have some role in, in, in policy implementation, they can only work as knowledge partners and research hubs for the development and the implementation of, of those policies. Um, the universities, we should also remember that the um, uh, institutions, both public and private, can act as the um, uh, incubation grounds for the SDGs. We can replicate uh, the best practices of living labs in, in, in world's leading universities that work on SDGs. Youth engagement initiatives, such as student ambassadors for SDGs that we currently run at Kaudan University as well, and a number of innovation and incubation programs for this disease are uh, much needed in, in, in our campuses. Finally, um, since uh, the Afghanistan SDGs is a national commitment and, and more needed uh, than ever before, we believe universities can work together uh, with the ministry and international partners to develop policies, programs, and initiatives where awareness raising, um, youth engagement, advocacy, and public consultations are the uh, cornerstone of the work we do as part of our collaboration. Um, just as a final note and, and thought, uh, uh, we believe that SDSN Afghanistan provides that glimmer of hope. It indicates and signifies the beginning of a sustainable partnership where universities national and international partners can work together in such a manner where universities are truly the enablers of innovation, prosperity, and global partnership for Afghanistan and beyond. That should be all. I uh, would welcome your thoughts, questions, and reflections. Thanks again for uh, inviting me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nazat, for your uh, valuable reflections. SDSN Afghanistan thanks all panelists for their insightful and thought-provoking remarks. SDSN Afghanistan will work with you to make sure your visionary ideas are communicated to all stakeholders and we use them to improve SDG-related uh, practices. Uh, now it is time for questions. Uh, people have asked several questions. Uh, uh, the team has um, uh, shortlisted uh, four. Uh, I will uh, rather uh, read the question and then uh, ask you, anybody who can contribute to the answer, that will be amazing. So I, I'm, I'm not going to address this question to any specific person in the panel. Um, um, uh, some people asked, what, what are some of the best policies and strategies to tackle poverty in Afghanistan, as you know, uh, uh, poverty reduction is a very important uh, sustainable development goals. Now we can uh, hear uh, your uh, responses to this question from the participants. And if I repeat myself, uh, what are the best strategies and policies that the, the government, the different sectors in Afghanistan can undertake to tackle poverty. Or you can uh, talk uh, from the address of your organization, how, uh, for example, research, how collaboration, how monitoring and evaluation, and uh, how partnership with the private sector uh, helps tackle poverty in Afghanistan. And if someone is uh, speaking, uh, then you, you may be on mute, if any. Okay, I go to the second question. The second question is about, uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, most of you addressed collaboration and coordination, but still there are some questions. What is the solution for the lack of collaboration and coordination among different stakeholders? And how does SDSN Afghanistan want to solve this challenge? 
maybe I address this question specifically to Mr. Shafai. Uh, do you want yeah. me to repeat the question? Uh, no, no. Uh, okay. Yes, Mr. Let me. Uh, uh, so th there is a problem in Afghanistan. You know, one is the uh, the awareness, which uh, uh, the partners, for example, all actors and beneficiaries are not aware of of the program itself. That is one of the issue. So that uh, uh, the key actors not came together to to work. And another, as I, I said, unfortunately, the organizations are working, as Mr. Siddiqui and others highlighted in Afghanistan. All organizations and beneficiaries are interested to do that. But up to now, at policy level and also at organization level, unfortunately, the approach was more like a silos or it, is, it was not like in, in a coordinated way. That is the problem. And the government, for example, uh, if we say the uh, unity government, so we have seen many contradictions at policy level between the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of uh, Economy, which was responsible for, uh, for, the, for the SDG. And uh, also at organization level, like universities, you see, for the first time you see three universities on this platform, like a government uh, university, which is Kabul University, Cardon and Kati, which they, they are represented at private universities. It's still, you know, the concept is that uh, at the government level, even the Ministry of Higher Education, unfortunately, sometimes they are looking that these private universities, they cannot do anything. So they are not looking like, as a partner. So this type of view is a challenge now, it's still in Afghanistan. So that's why now you see it's gradually getting better. Now we are a close partner with Ka Ka Kabul University. So with the help of uh, even UNDP, we will establish a uh, SDG incubation center in Afghanistan. So, uh, so this is the problem. But we can because at the Ministry of Economy, if you see, they have done a significant role. They published many, uh, many documents at uh, like like what uh, Ministry of Finance uh, did. Uh, you see, there are committees in the executive committees. They are representative uh, more from uh, government. Unfortunately, as Mr. Neza said, that <clears throat> role of university in that committee is uh, very symbolic, unfortunately. They did not look to the universities as part of the solution still. So just recently, if you see to the list, uh, there's just Khatib universities there from the whole academia. So these are the issue. So we hope that the SDS in Afghanistan as a new platform, besides uh, being partnered with the Ministry of Economy, uh, find a solution how to work together more in coherent way uh, to, to put together synergies to, to better work. So this is our hope. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shafai. Anybody else in the panel who wants to contribute to that question? Could I just comment on the first question? Please. Um, when people ask, you know, how can, what can we do about poverty? It's generally because they understand poverty as monetary poverty. We have the Afghan multidimensional poverty index, but what does that mean for policies? The trouble is our policies tend to be, as uh, Zia Shafai has been pointing out, siloed. Uh, we don't connect. Uh, we don't have what you call policy coherence. So I think the first step uh, is to understand poverty differently. New thinking is required because the poverty level has been declining according to traditional measures uh, for a very long period of time now. Uh, so we need to consider poverty as an example of a complex issue rather than a complicated issue. That means there's a lot of uncertainty between, there's no cause and effect that you can put your finger on. So we need a multiple, multi-dimensional approach. So the main recommendation is policy coherence. And that's one of the roles for the um, SDSN would be to promote this sort of cross-organizational, cross-disciplinary thinking that is required to tackle an issue like poverty. Over. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Um, if uh, there is no more comments on, on the first two questions, I go to the third question. The third question is about uh, the uh, regional 
beyond Afghanistan mechanisms. How can Afghanistan uh, build and strengthen regional uh, partnerships so that uh, the nation can move towards uh, achievements of SDGs uh, faster and with firmer steps? I repeat the question. The question is with regard to regional uh, uh, partnerships and mechanisms uh, in terms of SDGs. Yes, please, uh, Dr. Matwani. Thank you very much. I just thought I'd uh, have a couple of uh, things to say on that point. There's indeed, a, there is that urge to connect with uh, regional uh, countries and uh, for good measure because there's so much more familiarity and commonality in terms of uh, the cultural uh, context as well as uh, being landlocked or being close enough to landlock to how to try, how to jump over that and make it land linked countries it it, it has to happen at three different levels uh, at least uh, and this is just me talking uh, in response to the question the first one being at the individual level there are immense opportunities there for scholars for practice practitioners, as well as for individuals who are working in uh, think tanks to actually reach out and to build and try and build that bridge. So often that doesn't happen. And somebody, we're always kind of waiting for that invita invitation to, to occur, but to take that initiative. So at the individual level, that has to happen. Secondly, uh, I think a network like the SDSN has that opportunity once it begins to take shape and form to be able to bring different organizations and individuals with different areas of expertise together so that they can uh, have a common platform, work out what are the areas that we want to address so that there is some coherency and then reach out to different organizations. So there is a necessity to do it in a more coherent manner. And I think SDSN can provide that uh, platform. The third, of course, is to uh, lobby the government. Uh, the, the government has uh, devoted a lot of human capital to its uh, regional connectivity and regional cooperation program along culture, education, economics, and also diplomacy. There are a lot of linkages that have been built there. And there's also Afghan diaspora in a range of different uh, uh, countries in the near as well as far neighborhood. So. If there is a, a defined way in which organizations uh, would like to pursue it, I think it would come down to having a uh, at least presenting something in terms of a formal proposal and saying, this is how we plan to engage uh, uh, regionally using existing uh, approaches so that we can uh, catalyze uh, cooperation uh, in the region. None of this is gonna happen in a piecemeal manner, but it, it will, uh, and it's very difficult to bring everybody together because I'm not talking about centralization, but it's about that coherence. So I think if we take these type of steps and we look to what other organizations are doing in terms of how they're building those relations, there's that scope, but it's also really important to be patient uh, and to persevere because all of this takes time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Matwani, for your valuable inputs. Yeah, can uh, I add Mr. something? Yeah, please, but uh, we are uh, running out of time. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, please be quick. Just yeah, yeah, two minutes. Uh, two things. Uh, I can discuss both at macro level and also at uh, the organization level. At the macro level, unfortunately, in Afghanistan, the government and all of us who are responsible, especially the government, for bringing this, the public goods, which is security, and then to create an enabling environment for Afghanistan, where, where the companies across the borders, they, they, they believe that in Afghanistan, there is no risk, political, socio-political risk in the country. So if that is solved, for example, and the government of Afghanistan brings the public goods in the society, automatically the private sector, the companies will work with the regional level. At the organization level, as I can say that uh, now you see uh, we organize, it's in Afghanistan as a platform, 
it is a network here, so we are already in touch with the other networks in the, in the Gulu. For example, if we see a station Grace, there's a network of uh, uh, all the partners are there, they are working together, even on the oceans, issues of oceans, how to recommend, how to solve that as an environment aspect of the SDGs. So in this aspect, universities, think tank organization, very fast they can go and uh, they can uh, uh, sign MOUs, for example, with international universities to jointly, uh, for example, plan for the programs and in terms of curriculum, research and then. So this is started. So in this it is fast, but for the government, in terms of the public goods availability of that, that's very much important to, to consider in Afghanistan. So that to enable organizations and the country to, to be integrated with the, with the other nations. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Shafai for your insightful remarks. Uh, now we close this session and we take a 10 minute break before we officially uh, launch SDSN Afghanistan in a separate session that will be participated uh, by uh, very distinguished guests, including the Minister of Higher Education and the head of UNSDSN. So we will take a 10 minute break and we will be back. Thank you.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Dorothea. I am with the SDSN Secretariat, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the official launch event of SDSN Afghanistan. Um, I see we have a few people that stuck with us from the previous session. Um, I do think, nonetheless, that we should give it a couple more minutes for everybody else to join um, so that we have everyone in their seats and ready to go once we start the official launching ceremony. I see our moderator is connected again as well. Hi, Abdullah. <laughs> and um, I do believe we have our speak, some of our speakers already on the line as well. So I think, yeah, a couple more minutes, two more minutes perhaps for everybody to get started and then we can jump right in. Just one more housekeeping item because we have received several questions on this. As we have a very tight agenda today, you will not be able to unmute your microphones or um, share your videos if you are an attendee to this event. Uh, this role is reserved for our speakers today. Nonetheless, if you have any questions for any of our, <clears throat> sorry, if I, of any of our speakers, you are welcome to share them in the chat or in the Q&A uh, section of this uh, Zoom webinar. We will make sure to get back to you uh, even if we don't manage to respond to your questions during this event. This also goes for the previous session that we had with uh, some very interesting speakers as well. So we will be connected during the entirety of the event to answer any and all of your questions um, about SDSN Afghanistan, about SDSN Global, or if you have any logistical issues. Um, and yeah, uh, I wish us all a successful launch of, of SDSN Afghanistan. Thank you. We'll give it two more minutes. Okay, uh, I guess uh, there are 64 people online. Uh, and now we may start the second session and as we go, we will be expecting other uh, speakers to join us. And uh, Dorothea, will you make sure that they will have the right to uh, join us with their voice and video? Okay. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the official launch of SDSN Afghanistan. SDSN Afghanistan was established in March this year 
and is hosted by Qatib University. Without any further ado, I would like to ask Mr. Ali Ahmad Yusufi, Qatib University Chancellor, to make his opening remarks. Uh, let me first introduce you to the audience. Mr. Uh, Ali Ahmad Yusufi holds a master's degree on organic chemistry from Ferdowsi University of Mashhad, Iran, and holds a bachelor's degree in applied chemistry from Tabriz University of Iran. Currently, he is the chancellor of Qatib University academic affairs and student affairs. He has been a faculty member in, med in the medicine faculty at Qatib University. From 2011 to 2014, he has also served as vice chancellor of academic affairs of Ghalib University. He also has been a member of National Academic Program Review Committee and Consulting Board in the Ministry of Higher Education. Uh, Mr. Yosefi, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Ali. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am pleased to welcome the Excellency Dr. Abbas Basir, the Minister of Afghanistan and Higher Education, Professor Socks, the President of UNSTSN, I think they will join us later. Deputy Minister Nabis Rouge, Vice Chancellor, Professor Sharifi from Kabul University. SDSN's Vice President, Mrs. Maria Cortes Puch, distinguished panel speakers, all respected leadership council members and participants from different sectors. We are happy that official Afghanistan chapter of SDSN is finally launched today. And on this day, I want to thank all colleagues and partners in making this happen, which was not possible without their contribution. Since March 2020, our colleagues at SDS in Afghanistan were continuously working on some programs, projects, and events, such as holding the first ever SDS in Afghanistan LC meeting, reaching out to potential members and membership engagement working on enhancing partnership with national and international stakeholders and developing programs for the year 2021. As most of our participants are from and in Afghanistan and some of them do not know about the work of SDS in Afghanistan thoroughly, I want to continue my speech in Dari language for their comprehension. For our international participants, we will later release a comprehensive report of the event in English language. خب من تشکر میکنم از حضور تمامی اعضایی که بسیار لطف کردند و اشتراک کردند در برنامه افتتاح استیسن افغانستان. سوالات بسیار زیادی را من دیدم که در اینجا مطرح شده بود از طرف هموطنان من خواستم که به زبان دری و با یک زبان بسیار ساده بخوایم در مواردی که نیاز به آگاهی دهی هست صحبت بکنم و کوشش میکنم که از وقت کمال استفاده شود بحث ایجاد استیسن افغانستان مطرح است من خوب است که اشاره ای بکنم که اولویت های ما در استیسن افغانستان چی هست همونطور که بعضی از دوستان میدانند ممکن است برای بسیار از دوستان سوال باشه که چه اولویت هایی در استیسن افغانستان فعلا مد نظر قرار گرفته شده که البته میتونه توسعه هم پیدا بکنه اولویت اول ما بحث اورنس انگیجمنت است به عبارت دیگه ما آگاهی دهی و شامل سازی است که ما چطور میتونیم یا از چه طریقی میتونیم جامعه را سکتور دولتی و خصوصی را در زمینه استی جی آگاه بسازیم و مسئولیت های هر فردی را در جامعه برشان مشخص بکنیم چطور میشه از طریق میدیا از طریق جورنال ها و از طریق گایدلاین هایی که تهیه میشه ما با این سکتور ها در ارتباط شویم و بتوانیم با کمک اینها در ارتباط با آنها بحث آگاهی دهی در زمین استیجی را در سطح افغانستان افزایش دهیم همین شما بهتر میدانید که یک مقدار فکر میکنم که سطح آگاهی جامعه در زمینه اهداف توسعه پایدار در افغانستان پایین هست اولویت دوم بحث تیچ افغانستان است یا هم آموزش افغانستان سوالاتی در این قسمت مدیدون که از طرف دوستان هم مطرح شده بود استیسن افغانستان 
دو کار بسیار مهم رو در این زمینه باید انجام بده بحث تجزیه و تحلیلی است از از تجزیه و تحلیلی که باید داشته باشیم از کیفیت آموزش در افغانستان و اینکه چطور میتونیم آموزش را در افغانستان بهبود ببخشیم موضوع دوم بحث فراهمسازی آموزش اهداف انکشاف پایدار در افغانستان است که این میتونه به دو طریق اتفاق بیفته سوالی که دوستان مطرح کرده بودند میشه در کریکولم های درسی رشته های مختلف مزامینی را برای آشنایی بیشتر و همچنان مسئولیت پذیری بیشتر نسل جوان در کریکولم درسیشان گنجانیده شود و مسئله دیگری که می توانیم متناسب با نیاز ما به توسعه در افغانستان رشته های مورد نیاز به صورت تخصصی در افغانستان ایجاد شود بحثی که ما همراه محترم الدارداری صاحب داشتیم و اونا پیشنهاد بسیار جالبی داشتن که ما می توانیم برای هر 17 گل 17 رشته ماستری را ایجاد بکنیم اینها میتونه صحبت هایی باشه در مورد اولویت دوم ما تیش افغانستان که چطور میتونیم به اینها دست پیدا بکنیم و اولویت سوم به نوعی پیدا کردن یا ارائه راه حل ها برای دستیابی به اهداف این کشاف پایدار در افغانستان است که مسئله بسیار مهمی یا چالش های بسیار مهم بیره ما در افغانستان داریم بحث دیتا منیجمنت در مورد اهداف توسعه پایدار یک بحث بسیار مهم است ما دسترسی به دیتا شاید در افغانستان یکی از مشکلاتی است یا یکی از دشوارترین مسائل و چلنج هایی است که با او به نوعی دست به گریبان هستیم بعضی از چالش های کشور ما بسیار خاص هست یکی از اینها بحث دیتا منیجمنت است بحث دیگر مانیتورینگ اند ریپورتینگ است چطور میتونیم نظارت و گزارش دهی را به نهادهای بی طرف مثل امی استیسن افغانستان و گذار بکنیم و چطور میتونن این گونه نهادها تأثیر گذار باشند در تصمیم سازی ها ما برای فهم مطلب میخواییم که یک سه مثال بسیار ساده را ارائه بکنم چیزهایی که همی امروز با اینها ما به قولی در تماس هستیم و میبینیم و مشاهده میکنیم شاید فهم مطلب کمی برای همه ما آسان شود موضوع اول بحث ارائه گزارشی است که UNDP جدیدا نشر کرده بحث ردبندی شاخص توسعه انسانی است در سال 2019 افغانستان با رشد 0.511 تقریبا هم نیم 0.55 شاخص توسعه انسانی در افغانستان است در ردبندی ما در پایین ترین رده قرار داریم خب شاخص توسعه همه ما شما میدانیم بحث انکشاف در زمینه های زندگی سالم عمر طولانی دسترسی به دانش و آگاهی است و سطح زندگی مناسب است با همه گزارشی که تازه نشر شده به خوبی وضعیت رو بر ما نشان میده و سوالی که در اینجا مطرح میشه که برای تغییر وضعیت چی باید کرد یک مثال دیگه براتون بزنم از آلودگی در کابل همیشه در فصل سرما در پایتخت افغانستان ما متاسفانه با آلودگی بسیار شدیدی مواجه هستیم بحث محیط زیست بحثی است که بسیار مطرح است در در اهداف انکشاف پایدار هم به ویژه به این توجه شده شما ببینید روش درست از منابع تجدید ناپذیر در کنار روی کرد استفاده از منابع تجدید پذیر برای تولید انرژی لازم است ما متاسفانه بعضی وقتا احساس میکنیم که آنقدر روی کرد ما به سمت استفاده از منابع تجدید پذیر رفته که فراموش کردیم که منابع تجدید ناپذیر رو ما در حال استفاده ازش هستیم و بسیار هم بد استفاده میکنیم حداقل میتونیم شرایطی رو فراهم بکنیم وقتی که به ناچار از منابع تجدید ناپذیر در تولید انرژی استفاده میشه همین به عنوان اصلی ترین منبع تولید انرژی فعلا در افغانستان در فصل سرما مورد استفاده میشه به نوعی شیوه استفاده بهینه به خاطر کاهش آلایندگی از این باید در نظر گرفته شد من خدمت وزیر سب خیر مقدم عرض میکنم حضورشان را و امیدوارم که جلسه با حضورشان پربارتر شود مثال سوم را ارائه بکنم که همین روزها باز اتفاق افتاد طرح آموزش ابتدایی را از وزارت معارف همه ما و شما شنیدیم بحث ای که در مناطق دوردست سنوف اول تا سوم مکتب 
در مساجد به آموزش بپردازند خب دلیلی هم در اونجا ارائه شده ما سکتور معارف رو یک نهاد سیاسی و امنیتی در نظر نمیگیریم پس آنچه که به عنوان دلیل بیان میشه همو را در نظر میگیریم ما به دنبال دلایل مستتر نمیگردیم هدف ما هم قضاوت کردن در رد و یا پذیرش یک طرح نیست فقط سوالاتی که اینجا مطرح میشه میفهمیم که دوستان هم به این سوالات فکر بکنن سوال اولی است آیا اسنادی دال بر ارزیابی مکاتب و اثبات این موضوع که متعلمین از ارزش های اسلامی دور شدهاند وجود داره سوال دومی است آیا کدام ارزیابی مشخصی که نشان دهنده فراگیری بیشتر ارزش های اسلامی برای متعلمین از طریق آموزش در مساجد آن هم در مناطق دور, دور دست و محروم باشه آیا وجود داره بسیار ساده بگویم چه چیزی نشان میدان کسانی که در مساجد در مناطق دور افتاده تعالیم رو میبینند یا آموزش میبینند اینها به واقع ارزش های اسلامی رو پاس میدن آیا این سبب ترویج خشونت در جامعه نشده؟ آیا سبب محدودیت در حقوق زنان نشده؟ و مهمترین سوالی است بر مبنای می تر حالا چه اجرا شود چه اجرا نشود چگونه میتوان این طرح رو بیایم در آینه شاخص های توسعه انسانی پیدا بکنیم پس ببینید بس بسیار سوال بزرگ میشه ما چیزهایی رو در روی کاغذ میآوریم اهداف این کشاف و پایدار افغانستان همیار چارچوب انتباق دهیش پیش من هست حتی بحث اهداف انکشاف پایدار افغانستان سکتور معارف که شامل وزارت معارف، وزارت تحصیلات عالی، آکادمی علوم و برخی از نهادهای زیدخل دیگه هستند اینجا وجود دارد. با نارسایی ها و نواقصی که در اینها هست و قبلا دوستان به او اشاره کردند اما همین هایی هم که در روی کاغذ آورده شده وقتی که به عمل می رسیم می بینیم شاید درست عمل نمیشه به اینها یا مسیر مسیر دیگری است که ما در او روان هستیم. حال چالش های دیگری هم وجود داره بحث ناامنی، بحث فساد اداری که اینها به صورت خاص باید در کنسپت افغانستان مورد بررسی و کنکاش قرار بگیره. اینها میتونن مثال های و ده ها مثال از این رو میتونیم بیاریم که ما نیاز به ایجاد چنین نهادهایی مثل استیسن افغانستان داریم تا بیاین چالش ها را در داخل افغانستان آنچه که مشخصا مربوط افغانستان است ما نمیتونیم الگوی مناسب و موافقی در خارج از افغانستان پیدا بکنیم برای این چالش ها راه کار ارائه کنند لازم است که نهادهای آکادمیک عقل انتقادی جامعه باشند متاسفانه نهادهای آکادمیک برشان مجال از این داده نشده ما نیروهای بسیار متخصص و ورزیده ای داریم که در نهادهای آکادمیک افغانستان راه برشان باز نشده تا بیایند در این زمینه های اظهار نظر بکنند تا بیایند وارد شوند انتقاد بکنند و بر مبنای انتقادشان راهکار ارائه بکنند بسیار ساده بگویم ما جزایر جداگانه داریم از نهادهای تحصیلی اعم از دولتی و خصوصی مراکز تحقیقی جامعه مدنی صنعت و بازار کار و دولت میدانیم این جزایر جداگانه هیچ کدامشان به تنهایی نمیتانند سبب موفقیت در دستیابی به توسعه پایدار در کشور شود هیچ راهی به غیر از آن که بین اینها ارتباط برقرار شده وجود نداره ارتباط رو کی برقرار کرده میتونه مطمئنا ما به تنهایی کار رو نمیتونیم بکنیم دولت به عنوان عامل اصلی یا مجری اصلی روند توسعه در کشور میتونه یک کار تسهیل بکنه جامعه و یا نهادهای بین المللی کمک کننده میتونن حمایت بکنند از این روند باز هم ببینید واضح بگویم ما و شما نگران آینده فرزندان خود هستیم در این کشور واردات علم و تکنولوژی تاثیر چندانی بر توسعه نخواهد داشت ما باید شروع بکنیم به تولید علم ما باید شروع بکنیم به تولید تکنولوژی شما این دقت بکنید بسیار مورد اتهام هستند بعضی از کشورها که حتی زباله های خود را به عنوان کالا و فناوری به کشورهای جهان سوم وارد میکنیم ما واردات تکنولوژی را به اون معنا شاید نداشته باشیم اگر به این دقت بکنیم میبینیم که ما بعضا زباله های کشورهای دیگر به کشور خود وارد بکنیم که نگرانی های محیط زیستی را در آینده برای ما برمغان خواهد آورد لذا من ختم میکنم صحبت های خودم با توجه به این نگرانی های موجود 
نیاز ارتباط و اشتراک زینفان در ارائه ارائه ارائ حل و سهمگیری برای توسعه کشور وجود دارد نهادهای آکادمیک، شرکت‌ها، بنگاه‌های اقتصادی، جامعه مدنی، دولت، نهادهای بین‌المللی حمایت کننده میبایست به این جمع بپیوندم یادمان باشه نقش محوری تحصیلات عالی بر پای آموزش، تحقیق، تولید علم و تکنولوژی و همچنان میخوام به صورت خاص اشاره بکنم تصمیم سازی برای, اتص... برای توسعه این میتونه نقطه اتصال همان جوانب زیدخ در توسعه باشه من بیشتر وقت رو نمیگیرم وقت صحبت کردن من خلاص شده ببخشید که یک مقدار از وقت هم عبور کردم برای تان آرزوی موفقیت دارم Thank you very much I appreciate for your paying attention Um, uh, thank you, thank you, um, Mr. Yusufi, for your insightful remarks. Ma starafe khod, starafe SDSN wa hamay huzar tashrifawari jalmat mab wazir sahib tasallat ali ra ba jalsa khushamat megam. On my behalf, on uh, on the behalf of uh, SDSN Afghanistan and all uh, guests and uh, participants. I warmly welcome uh, his senior of higher education, His Excellency Minister, and then we can uh, listen to his remarks. Uh, prior to Ministry of Higher Education, His Excellency Dr. Abbas Basir held various significant national and international posts. He has served as Director General of South Asia Cooperative Environment Program, was appointed as Deputy for South Asia Nutrition Hub, also served as Deputy Director General of National Environmental Protection Agency. He also worked as the Acting Director of International Cultural Relations Directorate in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Dr. Basir has served as a lecturer for almost seven years at both master's and undergraduate levels, teaching environmental sciences and water management studies at Khatib, Da'wat, Afghanistan, Ibn Sina, Dunya, Rajasthan, and Gauhar Shad universities. He has a master of international law and PhD in international environment law from Jawaharlal Nauru University in India. وزیر صاحب مشتاقانه منتظر شنیدن صحبت های شما هستیم. You can either speak in English or Dari. بسیار تشکر. سلام علیکم. جناب آقای یوسفی، همکاران عزیز و گرامی. سلام علیکم. عصر شما بخیر. All participants in this meeting uh, are welcome and uh, very good afternoon and uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank University of Khatib for launching this very important event, uh, SDS in Afghanistan. Uh, I'm very much hopeful and Uh, encouraged by by, by this uh, uh, event that uh, we are uh, addressing this very important issue scientifically and uh, working together to uh, uh, overcome the challenges that we are facing uh, to work on uh, sustainable development issues. Uh, All participants know that uh, 2015 is remarked by two very important event, events. First is uh, uh, Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and the second is uh, uh, the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable uh, Development. This agenda is a plan of action for people, planet, and prosperity. It also seeks to strengthen universal peace and larger freedom. All have recognized 
that eradicating poverty in all its of form and uh, dimensions, including extreme poverty, is the greatest global challenge and an indispensable requirement for sustainable uh, development. Uh, there, there are different ways to address these challenges, but but we, uh, as, as uh, 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 higher education system, uh, you are going to address this very important issue through uh, higher education system through different ways. Um, this uh, Excellency, I think we lost you, if you can hear us. Minister of Higher Education is back online. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Excellency? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, now it is working? Yes. Is, is this okay? Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the important issue is to understand the role of higher education in this uh, uh, area to address uh, uh, SDGs in Afghanistan. Um, of course, all of you know that uh, SDG uh, 4 uh, is addressing uh, uh, this issue through Ministry of Higher Education and Ministry of Education in general. And the role of Ministry of Higher Education would be through two uh, very important uh, ways. One is uh, education, and the second is uh, uh, research and development. Uh, we are now working uh, to uh, update our curriculums uh, and, in, uh, and integrate uh, SDGs into our uh, uh, education curriculum. This is very important steps that we are going to take during uh, 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 next year uh, and after, uh, because without without uh, uh, in, in integrating and uh, mainstreaming uh, uh, stages into our uh, education curriculum, it would be difficult for for us to address this very important issue. The other uh, way is uh, uh, research. Uh, uh, and we are going to invest on uh, research activities in our country to address different uh, uh, aspects of this very important issue. As Mr. As Dr. Yusufi mentioned, uh, <clears throat> without uh, having uh, um, local research activities in Afghanistan, it would be difficult to address this very important issue. Uh, we, we, we need to have national policies on sustainable development. Uh, different sectors are uh, uh, required to have uh, their specific policies to address this uh, uh, issue. But how, how can we develop those policies? Uh, having a scientific-based policy is very important. And if we are going to have a scientific-based policy, we need to uh, um, uh, do research. And the uh, 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 Minister of Higher Education can facilitate this uh, uh, kind of activities and has res res and is responsible in fact to to do this uh, uh, to 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 invest on education and also to invest on 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 research activities there are different uh, uh, kind of coordination that we we, we need to uh, to do uh, first for uh, uh, is the, the uh, financial support uh, from international communities because it, it is the uh, responsibility of developed countries to provide such a kind of 
uh, 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 support to the uh, developing countries and Afghanistan is a member of uh, a part of the developing countries and re uh, require financial support uh, to address this issue. The other, the other way is to transfer technology uh, in, in, in different areas we, we, we need uh, uh, new technologies. Uh, of course, capacity building is very important. Uh, we, we, we need, we need uh, support from international communities to, to, to invest uh, on capacity development. Uh, and uh, finally, partnership is very important. Private sector and uh, public partnership is very important to address this uh, uh, very important issue. Uh, all of us know that uh, <clears throat> Uh, education is a cross-cutting thematic issue. Through education, we can address all the goals uh, uh, mentioned in Agenda 2030. Uh, and to address this issue through education, through uh, higher education system, we, 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 we need to have such a kind of support from uh, in international communities. Uh, at, at, at any way, uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, uh, this initiative, SDSN, I think is an opportunity for all of us to, uh, to encourage our inter international uh, uh, partners to uh, uh, work on this area and support the uh, uh, Ministry of Higher Education and uh, in general higher education system, universities, to to uh, uh, to work on this uh, uh, on these areas. Um, finally, I would like to thank Katib uh, uh, and uh, its international partners for launching this event. I, I think this is a good opportunity uh, for uh, uh, for us for all Afghan people uh, to 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 work on uh, on on SDGs. Uh, I would like to add. One more thing at the end that uh, Minister of Higher Education and Khatib University will be working together to uh, uh, coordinate uh, all related issues together. And I would be much happy to, uh, uh, to, to work on this uh, issue. And if any kind of coordination required and we can be supportive in this regard, we'll be supportive and we'd be uh, helpful uh, in, in this regard. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for organizing uh, this event and launching this uh, 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 very important event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, His Excellency, the Minister of Higher Education. Uh, SDSN Afghanistan is honored to have your support in improving the engagement of higher education institutes with Afghanistan Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I would like to introduce Professor Shafi Sharifi, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs from Kabul University. Professor Sharifi brings over 30 years of experience as a teacher, administrator, and researcher to the position of Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at Kabul University. He received his Bachelor, uh, bachelor of Science from Kabul University and his Master of Science from Ohio University in the US. Most recently, Professor Sharifi was director of the Information and Communication Technology Institute. Beyond his academic pursuits, he has published many articles and served in various professional capacities, including external consultant, specialist, human resource director, and program manager. He is a member of the International uh, Electrical and Electronics uh, Engineering, Project Management Institute, Afghanistan National Standardization Authority, and the uh, Graduate Program Higher Commission. Uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Sharifi, the floor is yours. Bismillah rahman rahim Thank you very much, Mr. Alimi, for your kind introduction. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Abbas Basir, Minister of Higher Education, respected um, uh, Soroush, Deputy Minister of Policy, uh, Ministry of Economics, Professor Jibri, President of US, UNSDN, uh, colleagues from Khatib University and participants 
to the second virtual meeting on the official launch of Sustainable Development Prevention Network. Good afternoon and good evening to all. I'm glad to participate in this important meeting and represent Kabul University. The Millennium Goal period came to its end and problems still remain. To address those problems, in 2015, the United Nations introduced another program called SDG to tackle several challenges the world is facing, such as climate change, poverty, hunger, health issues, women and girls vulnerability, unemployment, inequality, violence, injustice, lack of access to safe drinking water and sustainable energy. The Islamic Republic of Afghanistan also signed up to and promised to reach 17 goals and 169 targets included in the SDG. Based on that, Afghanistan adopted 16 of the 17 SDGs, 110 of the one, uh, out of the 169 targets and 177 of 232 indicators. All 16 Afghan SDGs are interlinked with each other and the authorities are trying much to reflect them in the policies and strategies of different sectors. Along with this, formulated available resources to maintain the SDGs into national priority programs and the Afghan national peace and development framework. We were not well prepared to respond and achieve those goals that coronavirus also uh, contributed to worsen the situation and problem. If we look at the SDG Afghan SDG, the Afghan SDG in the education sector include goal number four, eight, 11, 12, and 16. In addition to that, there are 14 targets and 41 indicators related to the education sector. Coming to that point, what Afghan universities can do and what is their rule to achieve those goals? We at Kabul University believe and I'm sure you agree with us that the universities and higher education institutions are essential and can support, promote, and contribute to achieving all the 16 adopted goals and play an important role in meeting the challenges of sustainable development through education. Because the universities train the new generation with the knowledge, skills, and attitude, create study programs, organize extracurricular activities and understanding to address sustainable challenges and the opportunities perform research that advances sustainability development agenda and is considered a key component of long-term economic growth. To be effective and increase the role of universities in achieving Afghan SDGs, we need several things to be done. Although some of these have been already spoken with uh, through uh, the, His Excellency Minister and also Mr. Yusufi from Qatar University. To begin with, a consortium of universities is required to conduct projects that help to enable students to shape sustainability competencies. And I'm glad Qatar University has already taken up this initiative and thank you for that. It is necessary to equip all individuals with appropriate knowledge and skills to shape a system of sustainability related values and sustainability competencies. The sustainability competencies include system, systematic thinking, interdisciplinary work, anticipatory thinking, justice, responsibility and ethics, critical thinking and analytical work, interpersonal relationships and collaboration, empathy and change of perspectives communication use of media, strategic thinking, personal engagement, assessment, and evaluation, intolerance for ambiguity and uncertainty. The university's commitment to the Afghan SDG, universities can also use their expertise, capabilities, and leadership to influence other stakeholders to adopt more sustainable policies and practices to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Third, raising awareness. The study shows neither the majority of students nor their 
teachers are aware of the Afghan SDG. We need to increase this awareness, not among the students and teachers, but also among the internal and uh, stakeholders of the Afghan SDGs, as raised by uh, Dr. Yusufi. Also, the universities have to utilize their expertise to implement qualitative and quantitative research contribution to the SDG. Public universities need funds for research projects and modern technologies to achieve sustainable development, as already been discussed by His Excellency Minister of Higher Education. Measurement and reporting is essential to universities' research contribution to the SDGs, targets and indicators. I'm sure that SDSN will take this into consideration. Last but not, not the least, strong collaboration is required. We need to foster internal and external collaboration in facilities, research, research interlinkages, and partnership to advance the Afghan SDGs. Kabul University used the following steps to start and engage with the SDGs. Mapping what it is already doing, building internal capacity and ownership of the SDGs, identifying priorities, opportunities, and gaps, integrated, integrating, implementing, and embedding the SDGs within our strategies, policies, plans, and monitoring, evaluating, and communicating its action on the SDGs. Kabul University has made significant progress over the past five years, the enrollment of new students increased almost 25%. Girls' enrollment increased from 31% to 46%. The teacher-student ratio improved from 42 to 36. In terms of programs, Kabul University introduced seven new programs in bachelor and five graduate programs. Currently, Kabul University offers 71 undergraduate 21 master's degree programs and two PhD programs. Also, Kabul University has six graduate programs and process. In addition to that, Kabul University builds up the capacity of faculty members through the professional development center. For students, we have student skill development center in which they acquire diverse skills may need upon graduation, providing free education to all, accommodating and providing free food to all female students, those who are coming from 35 kilometers away of the campus, reduce violence, harassment, discrimination, equal access to libraries and information resources. These were the uh, progress that we had from 2015 at the time that uh, the SDGs introduced by the UN. Kabul University attempted to shape sustainable development oriented competencies through formal sustainable development education and non formal activities towards social and environmental challenges. I hope you have enjoyed what I have discussed. And thank you very much for your consideration and looking forward to work together in achieving the Afghan SDGs. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sharifi, for your insightful words. And thank you for your uh, patience. Uh, definitely, uh, Kabul University is a strong ally of SDS in Afghanistan and hope we can enjoy our partnership in the years to come. I now welcome Ms. Maria Cortes Puch, Vice President of UN SDSN. Uh, Maria Cortes Puch is the Vice President of the National and Regional Networks for the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Prior to joining the SDSN, she worked for UNESCO in the Science Policy and Sustainable Development Division. Previously, she coordinated the European Energy and Transport Programs at the Polytechnic University in Madrid and worked for two years as a scientific officer at the Spanish Office for Science and Technology in uh, Brussels. She began her professional career with the National Institute of uh, Aerospace Technology in Madrid as a technology transfer officer. 
Maria holds a master's degree in international affairs from Columbia University and a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees in physics from uh, um, Complutense University in Madrid. Uh, uh, Ms. Poch, now the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, and welcome everyone to the launch of the Afghanistan SDSN. Um, let me start by saying that we are so incredibly proud of our Afghan SDSN. Um, this has been one of the most remarkable trajectories that we've seen in the networks program of SDSN. It started when in August of 2019, Katev University decided to host um, a workshop in Afghanistan about uh, the role of universities in implementing the SDGs. This was a first, uh, it was a phenomenal workshop where uh, Katab University was able to bring together uh, universities, the private sector, the government and UN agencies. We were amazed at, at this event. Um, Katab University was accepted as a member of SDSN and just very shortly decided to take the next step. They wanted to mobilize other universities and to gather this phenomenal energy uh, of universities in Afghanistan uh, to help implement the, the goals. Um, in a very short period of time, in six months, uh, Afghanistan SDSN was formally approved by, by SDSN. And even before being approved, it was already contributing and participating to SDSN's global initiatives. For example, and this happened already when the world was in lockdown, SDSN Afghanistan joined uh, the organization of the 24 hour webinar. This was a great effort of networks and members around the world to host a virtual web, uh, webinar in around 24 hours where networks and members were passing the baton one to the other organizing uh, sessions of one hour or more on very crucial topics, uh, Afghanistan, SDSN organized it specifically on the Afghan peace process and focusing on the role of women and the opportunities and challenges. All of this uh, phenomenal body of work would not have been possible without the spectacular leadership of Professor Sia Sheifai, as well as Mr. Ali Ahmad Yousefi, our phenomenal chairs. Um, the work of our colleague and manager of the network, Wali Farhad, has been outstanding. He has been joining all of the managers uh, of the networks worldwide and contributing, giving ideas and offering inspiration uh, through specific examples of his work. The network is now piloting a project to evaluate how universities are helping um, achieve the SDG. So we're very eager to hear the results of this uh, of this uh, project. And then it's also going to be organizing the first global solutions, sorry, the Afghan Solutions Forum that we hope will be a candidate to join the Global Solutions Forum of SDSN next year. So I won't take uh, more of your time. I just want to insist we are extremely proud. We're really inspired by the work that the Afghan SDSN uh, has done. And so are the many other networks of SDSN around the world. So congratulations for your work and very happy to be a part of this launch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Cortez Puch for your wise remarks and your support to SDSN Afghanistan. It is my honor now to present to you uh, Professor Jeffrey Sachs. I have met him uh, on many SDG courses, but I'm very delighted to meet him in person in this event. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey D. Sachs is a world-renowned development econ economist, director for Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and director of Center for Sustainable Development, Columbia University. He is the co-recipient of the 2015 Blue Planet Prize, the leading global prize for environmental leadership, and many other international awards and honors. As of 2017, he serves as special advisor to the United Nations uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, on the sustainable development goals. 
a set of 17 global goals adopted at the UN summit meeting in September 2015. He held the same position under the previous UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and prior to 2016, a similar advisory position related to the earlier Millennium Development Goals. Uh, Dr. Sachs, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Abdullah. And uh, thanks uh, colleagues for the chance to be with you. Uh, as uh, Maria has just said, we're very excited uh, to be working together and look forward to years ahead of cooperation and brainstorming. And I hope uh, we can uh, help you in some way to uh, address uh, some of uh, Afghanistan's uh, complicated challenges. Uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, the SDGs are a, a good signal of the things to do because the SDGs uh, invite uh, all countries to address challenges of poverty, hunger, education, healthcare, uh, water and sanitation, job creation, infrastructure, uh, renewable energy. These are all, uh, of course, uh, big challenges for Afghanistan. Uh, and um, there are a few places in the world that have uh, faced more problems, uh, more difficulties uh, than, than your country. I, I can't uh, start other than uh, apologizing for the role of my country in Afghanistan for the last 40 years. Uh, Sometimes when the United States comes, uh, it makes a mess uh, that is very big uh, because uh, people in my country don't know very much. Uh, they don't know very much geography, history, culture. Uh, and so uh, the uh, uh, history of America making uh, very bad uh, complications for other parts of the world, unfortunately, is a uh, a pretty big one. Uh, and I think in Afghanistan, this is uh, one of uh, the, the legacies uh, of the US, which got engaged in Afghanistan uh, about 42 years ago without knowing much other than uh, that uh, it was going to use your country as uh, uh, something of its Cold War with the Soviet Union. Uh, it didn't care about the Afghan people, didn't care about uh, your history, your culture your needs, nothing. Uh, it was just a piece on the chessboard uh, of the Cold War. And uh, that is stupid American thinking. Uh, and it continued for 40 years. I come from a country of very foolish people. So uh, I have to start by saying that because uh, for me, it's a privilege to think together with you uh, but I hope we uh, can think in a world that's very different from uh, the last 40 years, which has been too much geopolitics and not enough development uh, and not enough attention to uh, local needs, culture, ideas, and so on. I think in the 1950s and 1960s, Afghanistan had many reasons to be very optimistic about the future and things got derailed for 40 years. Uh, be, not because of anything inside, but because of uh, all of these uh, countries using your country one way or another uh, from the outside. And it's just a terrible, terrible blight. My belief uh, more than anything is uh, for a multilateral peaceful system. Uh, that's why I've worked for 20 years for the United Nations trying to uh, help put development, uh, human rights, um, and uh, peace uh, at the center of development strategy, which is where it belongs. So when I look uh, from afar uh, at uh, Afghanistan's problems, they're everywhere. Uh, they're problems of basic infrastructure, problems of basic literacy, uh, problems of healthcare, uh, problems of uh, uh, using uh, the new digital technologies, the new opportunities uh, for uh, electrification, uh, for energy, and so on. 
and uh, I'm very much open to uh, any directions that you would like to uh, uh, have uh, help and partnership uh, for brainstorming and for strategizing what could be effective ways to, to move forward. I believe that at the core of economic development uh, is investment, um, especially investment in children, uh, their health, their nutrition, their education, and especially investment in infrastructure, uh, which these days means electrification and digital access. Uh, I note that at least in the data, I don't know how accurate the data are, but only uh, around uh, one out of uh, seven people in Afghanistan uh, have access to the internet and to uh, mobile connectivity. But for a country like Afghanistan, which is uh, geographically complicated, spread out, rural, uh, where people need connections, uh, digital connectivity could be a huge plus, uh, but it needs a strategy for achieving it, but it could be a big advance because when you have digital connectivity, you can have schools online, you can have uh, telemedicine, you can have government services online. And so this is one area where I think investment is really opportune and important. Even you can have banking and payments online for people who have never stepped foot in a bank before. Uh, they can do it on a phone if they have a phone that's connected to the internet. So I would like to think about investment strategies in Afghanistan uh, for the human investments, especially health, education, nutrition, uh, and the investments in infrastructure, especially uh, energy and especially renewable energy, wind and solar and hydropower, clean green energy, uh, connectivity and transport, all of which are complicated in your country, uh, which is so geographically diverse uh, and also with all of the challenges, of course, of your neighborhood and landlocked and so forth. But these are where I would think are important strategies. Of course, Afghanistan has much potential for development as long as there's peace and decent governance also. In fact, a lot of rapid catching up possible if there's peace and rationality, uh, because you need rationality to know that uh, uh, these investments need to be made and to be able to undertake them. Uh, and I hope the possibility of uh, cooperation with neighbors. Uh, I'm personally a believer in cooperation with China and the Belt and Road Initiative uh, and uh, believe that there's a big possibility of development. Uh, again, my own country has been opposed to that because in the US mentality, anything good for China is bad for the United States. This is part of uh, American stupidity uh, because uh, Americans are pretty selfish. So they don't understand that it could be good for somebody else without being bad for them. Uh, but I personally am a believer in uh, the Belt and Road Initiative and China's very good at making infrastructure investments also. So China builds roads well, transport, power grids, all very helpful uh, that, that could be a big plus. Uh, and that's how I would uh, like to envision it. So also I'd like to explore with you what might be done, what would be priority investments and priority strategies uh, for uh, Afghanistan. I'll just add that Ideally, uh, SDSN Afghanistan can come up with some good strategies that could be used uh, by government and by the United Nations uh, and by the communities uh, to move forward. I think our role as universities is to think clearly uh, and to think longer term 
and to think about the good of the country and the good of the world uh, in as uh, rational and analytical way as we can. Uh, I know in my country, government doesn't think very much at all. Uh, we don't have much uh, government planning. We don't uh, think ahead. Our politicians are very corrupt. Uh, we've just had the stupidest president we ever had in our history. Uh, he's uh, going out of office uh, shortly, uh, we hope. I mean, I, we count on it, uh, but he's an idiot. So we didn't have any good thinking going on for the last four years. The new president is a much more decent person, uh, but even so, the government doesn't think very well. Uh, so we in, uh, in the SDSN USA are working on plans because we know the government won't make them. So we just issued a, a plan for how to change the energy system from uh, coal, oil, and gas to wind, solar, and hydro over the next 30 years. And we're using that plan. I'm trying to show it to the new members of the government that are coming in in the Biden administration to say, here is how this could be done. Because uh, once they come into office, they stop thinking by and large, uh, they just do politics. Uh, and so they need a framework uh, in order to think. So this is uh, what I would uh, hope that uh, you can do and that in some way we can help. Um, I hope that we have enough, well, I hope that we end this uh, COVID-19 disaster. Uh, that's, by the way, another area where my government was so stupid, so stupid that for 10 months they couldn't do one sensible thing to stop the epidemic. Uh, so we have 200,000 new cases every day and more than 2,000 people dying every day because the government is idiots, I'm sorry to say. So I apologize for my language, but this is the reality that we have faced here. Uh, my city alone, New York City, it has 3,000 3,600 new cases yesterday, just for the city. Uh, so, because, ah, anyway, this is what we have to work on. We have to work on problem solving. Uh, we have to work on some practical ideas. Uh, and uh, I'm personally interested in healthcare, uh, in education, in uh, renewable energy, uh, in digital, uh, services in upgrading agriculture, uh, in uh, connections uh, with regional cooperation uh, with uh, China, with Pakistan, with the, the, the uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor, if that makes sense. Uh, but uh, these are areas that I think are very important where uh, you can put forward some ideas and we'd like to help you do it and you're part of a global network. So on issues where you're looking for help or partnership, we're gonna find it for you uh, because we have more than a thousand universities around the world. Uh, and so somebody will know something uh, about some topic that you are especially interested in. If you wanna know how another country has approached a particular challenge, we'll find someone to discuss it together with you. And now that we're in the easy digital age, we can get onto Zoom anytime uh, to meet together, uh, to discuss. I can join your meetings and conferences uh, easily, but I wanna be uh, together with you in person sometime uh, because I've never had the chance to be in Afghanistan because of this disaster over the last 40 years, which is ridiculous because I've been in 140 countries but not in Afghanistan. So uh, I would like to come uh, when we can make, make the opportunity. So all of that is to say how excited I am. Uh, Maria expressed the same sentiment. We're really, really very, very pleased. And thank you so much for taking the leadership and please count on us. Thank you, Professor Sachs, for your assuring remarks. SDS and Afghanistan is proud to be working with visionary and humble people like you 
and your colleagues. As we are preoccupied with our economic growth, we hope to effectively take care of people and the planet too. With that note, uh, today, 17 December 2020, we officially launch Afghanistan Sustainable Development Solutions Network, SDSN Afghanistan. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to His Excellency Dr. Abbas Basir, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, President of UNSDSN, Professor Shafi Sharifi, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Kabul University, Ms. Maria Cortez Puch, Vice President, UNSDSN, Mr. Ali Ahmad Yusufi, Chancellor of Khatib University and Chair of SDSN Afghanistan, Mr. Nasir Siddiqui, Deputy Minister of Finance for Policy, Ministry of Finance, distinguished senior leaders of universities, UNDP civil society organizations, researchers and lecturers I cannot name here, and you will find them on the recording of this event. Our SDSN Afghanistan team and our UN SDSN colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I now close the launch ceremony of SDSN Afghanistan and thank you for your time and contribution and support to SDSN Afghanistan. We will all work hand in hand to improve life for the current and future generations in Afghanistan, the region and the world. And together we shall succeed. Thank you, goodbye and stay safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.